Hey girls and gals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and this week's vlog is going to be another weekly reading vlog, but it does have a theme. When you are seeing this, it will be officially September. And as I'm filming this, it's about the last couple of days of August. I'm a spooky bitch and I have been looking forward to fall for such a long time now. And I thought for this week's reading vlog, I should just go ahead and read some of my most anticipated horror and thriller books. So I did go ahead and pick out three books that I'd like to complete this week. They are all, I would say, horror or thriller. One of them is definitely a genuine horror and then the other two kind of toe the line between a horror and a thriller book. But nevertheless, these are all 2021 releases and I'm very excited to pick them up. So I'm going to go ahead, introduce this vlog, and talk about the three books that I would like to pick up this week. The first book I'm planning on picking up is Ace of Spades by Frida Abike Amide and this is a dark academia. It is a young adult thriller suspense novel um, with dark academia elements. So dark academia tends to be very almost gothic, character driven, slower paced. However, thrillers tend to be faster paced. So unsure of what kind of tone this book is going to set. But this is Gossip Girl meets Get Out. It's a contemporary thriller about two students, Devin and Chimaka, and their struggles against an anonymous bully. So they go to a very elite private school. They're selected to be a part of the elite school senior class prefects. It looks like they're going to have an amazing year at this very prestigious university. However, after this announcement is made, someone who goes by ACES begins using anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about these two students that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. With heart-pounding suspense and relevant social commentary comes a high-octane thriller from this debut author. So this one I wanted to pick up because I do love a good dark academia novel. I did really enjoy Gossip Girl back in the day. Um, not so much the books. I don't think I read all of them. I think I just read the first one. I did enjoy the TV series. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. So I'm just very intrigued by Gossip Girl meets Get Out. Gossip Girl does have like a very academic sort of focus. They're all school students and I've heard very good things about this one. So while YA thrillers are not usually my genre of choice, I've been hearing lots of great things and this also has that dark academia aspect that I do really love. So I'm looking forward to that one. The next book that I plan on reading during this vlog is Billy Summers by Stephen King. Now I'm not too sure if this is horror, it might be thriller. Recently I've noticed he's been kind of diving into more different genres as opposed to just horror and this definitely feels like more of a thriller than a horror but again we will have to see. This is following Billy Summers and he's a killer for hire. He's the best in the business but he'll only do the job if the target is a truly bad guy and now he wants out but there's just one last hit left to do before he can leave the business. So this novel is part war story, part love letter to small town America and the people who live there. And it features one of the most compelling and surprising duos in fiction who set out to avenge the crimes of an extraordinary evil man. It's about love, luck, fate, and a complex hero with one last shot at redemption. So that to me very much reads more like a thriller and a mystery than a horror, but um, I feel like with Stephen King books, there's definitely the potential and the chance for some random supernatural sort of elements to be thrown in here. So. I am looking forward to reading this one as well. If you can see from this bookshelf behind me, um, I do own a lot of Stephen King books and I do enjoy a lot of his work. So I am looking forward to reading this book this week as well. And then last, but certainly not least, probably the one that I have been most excited for since it came out. I cannot believe that I have not picked it up already because this is by one of my favorite horror authors and that would be the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. So it's following the horror Final Girl trope where at the end of a slasher there's only one usually girl left standing and in this book, there is a support group of all of those girls going through obvious trauma um, and working through their situations. However, I believe a killer starts picking them off again one by one. So I'm very excited about this one. In horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll, the one who fought back 
back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? So we're following Lynette Tarkington, and she's a real life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago, and it has defined every day of her life since. So she's been meeting with five other final girls and her therapist in a support group, but she quickly discovers at the beginning of this novel, someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again piece by piece. So yeah, those are the three novels. I'm listening to Ace of Spades, so that's why I don't have a physical copy. Those are the three novels that I plan on reading this week. Very excited for them all. I'm just very excited again for fall and fall weather. I live in the south, so most of September won't feel like fall outside. That's why I really gotta prioritize making like my personal ambiance a lot like fall, diving into some really great horror reads, and I'm very excited for them. <laughs> so I do think I will be starting this weekly reading vlog with Ace of Spades just because I do have it checked out from Libby. So it's from my library and the library that I have it checked out of actually does not keep books on your account for very long and I did wait for a long time to pick this one up. So um, I have about a week to read it. So I wanna prioritize that one because these two books I do own. So if I don't finish these within the week, that's okay. I can keep reading them some other time. However, it will take me a long time to get back on the wait list for Ace of Spades. So I think I'm going to start with that one and I'll go ahead and dive into that book. And yeah, very excited for a week of spooky reads. I will talk to you all in the next clip. I am a bit like over halfway, maybe just right at that halfway point of Ace of Spades. I am enjoying it. I will say sometimes I get very annoyed at combo titles because they're just not exactly like what the book is. This one was comped as Gossip Girl meets Get Out and I think that's very accurate. I also think that is also what the author intended because there are like at the dedication page, not the dedication page, but like sometimes there's like a quote or like some quotes to sum up the work before getting into the book. There is one from Get Out. Um, I can't remember if there's one from Gossip Girl or not, but there is a quote from Get Out. So that's very intentional on the author's part. And then I also do want to say that this one also does remind me a little bit of Pretty Little Liars as well, because we are following two students, Devon and Chiamaka, and they are the only black students at this very prestigious boarding school situation. It's not really a boarding school, but like a very luxurious private school, like think like Gossip Girl. It's like the school there. It's very, very much for kids with money. Um, Devon is there on a scholarship and that really makes him feel among a lot of other reasons, namely being one of the only two black kids at the school, very different and isolated. So it is very interesting because you get that um, almost sort of like catty, campy sort of Gossip Girl vibes where it's just as the Netflix blurb for Gossip Girl says, beautiful people doing terrible things to each other repeatedly, definitely has that vibe. It also has a Pretty Little Liars type vibe because there is a mysterious character named Aces who keeps sending things to the entire student population about Chiamaka and Devon and their secrets that they were kind of trying to keep hidden. So this mysterious figure is really ruining their lives and relationships by sharing these secrets about them and they're trying to figure out who is targeting them in such a way. I am really enjoying it so far. Um, again, I'm not like finished with it so I don't really feel as much of the get out vibes other than the fact that you can kind of tell 
from the beginning of this book you know these are two the two token black kids in the school and therefore a lot of things that happen to them even before this thing with aces kind of starts definitely feels racially motivated so it doesn't have the same sort of vibe as get out as a movie i would say just yet again i'm almost at the halfway point so it could go more into that i'm not feeling the vibes but definitely feeling like the same sort of themes where our characters are thinking you know it's always at the back of their mind like is this happening am i being targeted because i am black and i will say for this one i've seen a lot of people love this because it is like a dark academic thriller those are very popular right now well dark academia in general is a very popular genre and I've seen a lot of people gush about this one and I am enjoying my time reading it however I do want to say like this is like very very triggering for like a lot of different things so um maybe look up trigger warnings I'll try and do like a quick list of everything at the end of my review for this book like once I finish it but there's a lot in here and I definitely think sometimes it can be a little bit easy to get caught up in the very quippy and fast nature it does feel like this could be a very good adaptation um I feel like of TV again the Gossip Girl vibes are very very strong with this one with the different students and their dynamics I would say Chiamaka definitely feels like a Blair Waldorf sort of character and then we have the Vaughn who definitely has some Dan Humphrey vibes um, based on the way that he kind of has a niche for himself at the school as kind of an outcast a scholarship kid among a whole bunch of very rich students so it's very quippy the dialogue's very fast it does feel catty at times and I think sometimes that can kind of overshadow there is like a tone underneath that there are a lot of really dark things happening and being discussed and I don't want anyone going into this one because it is just like a fun time I don't think it's a fun time um I think this is very much a darker book I'm intrigued and nervous to see how it's going to end because things are not like looking great for our main characters at the moment but I am enjoying my time reading this it is very fast paced I would say each chapter really leaves off on a cliffhanger like a traditional thriller would so you follow both points of views Devon and Chiamaka so you'll be following Devon's point of view it'll end on a cliffhanger you'll go to Chiamaka's point of view it'll end on a cliffhanger and then you go back to Devon you fix that fix it a little bit and then you get another cliffhanger so it is very very fast paced a very interesting read one where I feel like the comp titles are very very accurate for it and I am intrigued to kind of finish it and see maybe the whodunit of it all. I have some suspicions but I'm very intrigued to kind of see how this wraps up. Other than reading I don't really have a lot on my plate for this weekend. It is the long Labor Day weekend so I got Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to relax and to do a lot of reading hopefully because um, I haven't gotten to be able to kind of read a lot during the work week and I've noticed weekends are really where I'm able to read a large amount of pages so I'm very excited for the next couple of days. Me and my partner are seeing Shang-Chi tonight so I'm very excited about that and I will update you all in the next clip.
it is now Monday. I've had a very, very productive weekend. I have actually ended up finishing two out of the three books that I was reading for this vlog, completely unintentional. First of all, I did finish Ace of Spades and I did really enjoy this one. I will say, I think it is being perhaps a little bit mismarketed because everything that I'm seeing about this one is that it's a really good dark academia sort of thriller. Um, and I just feel like when people are talking about how good this book is and how awesome it is to see kind of a more diverse because there are queer characters, there are black characters, um, dark academia book, they don't talk about how intense this book can get at times and it is very dark at times. So I know very much like dark academia is kind of like a mood and a vibe and what have you for this year. Um, it's very, very popular, but I just want to make it clear that this is like, it is a good book, but it is not like an enjoyable book. It, it goes through some very, very heavy topics. And I think that the way this is done um, is very good. I think the things that it talks about are perfect for that young adult age range talking about some very very hard things like trigger warning this book is immensely difficult um, to read for a number of reasons talks about institutionalized racism talks about homophobia self-harm violence um, police brutality um, incarceration of a parent loss of a parent death of a parent um, and then the biggest thing that this has going for it which may be a spoiler for some but i think it's an intense trigger so um, i will be leaving like a little note at the end of this screen um, and you can skip forward until you don't see it anymore um, if you don't want to be spoiled at all but this book talks at length like it's the biggest challenge that our main characters have to face um, and it's talked about at length and it's used this exact term in this book um, and that is social eugenics and that is understandably like a hugely dark thing to talk about so just make sure um, you are in that right headspace before reading this because it goes there it goes there and um, i went back and forth because i did have some issues as a reader when i was reading it it felt very very gossip girl very pretty little liars where there's almost like a overly dramatic sort of melodrama to it um and then it had like some definitely you know we're talking about very serious things things that people experience in real life and for me it was so jarring to have that tone with the other things being explored um but the more i think about it the more i think that was probably an intentional choice on behalf of the author so it's definitely like an interesting reading experience i would say the first couple of chapters you have no idea where this is going and then it takes a very dark dark turn also i will say since this is like a ya thriller i wouldn't say that the thrilling aspects are figuring out like who done it it's kind of just trying to deal with the terrors that are happening i'd almost call it more of a horror than a thriller because there's not really a mystery you find out very early on in the book um what is kind of happening at least i think you find out by like the 60 percent marker so in terms of a traditional thriller book usually you find out at the end um however our characters find out pretty early on for a thriller and are still having to deal with that though um not going to spoil it but the thrilling part and like the horrific part is not the who done it but it's like the whole entire concept of the ideas behind the who done it so that is if you're going into it expecting like that traditional thriller sense of um it's a mystery and you're going to get misdirected and twisted and turned until you can't figure out who it is um it's not going to be that it's going to be told to you very early on for a thriller but just the situational horror that our characters find themselves in um, continues throughout the entire book so i did really enjoy it and i really do think the way that this went about it almost with the tone at times does make it perfect for YA readers to really kind of dive deep into and kind of explore and unpack some of the darker themes in this book. So 
I thought it was a good read and I am glad that I managed to pick it up and finish it before my library hold got returned. So it's definitely like the best YA thriller that I've read in a while. But again, I feel like because it definitely didn't feel like a typical thriller in terms of pacing and plot structure, I would say this is more like a fast paced horror. Definitely YA. Our characters are very, very age accurate. Um, they're both seniors in high school, so they act perfectly true to seniors in high school. So very good YA thriller. I'd also say probably not like a dark academia because it does take place sometimes in a school where these characters are at, but if you're going into it expecting something like The Secret History or even like Ninth House or something, it's very different from that. But I thought it was a really good by a read and then the next book was one that I actually wanted to have more updates on but I pretty much sat down and read this in one sitting. It was very addictive. I read this all yesterday. I would say probably about 100 pages in the morning and then the rest at night and that would be the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and um, if you couldn't guess by the amount of time that it took me to fly through this one, I did really, really enjoy it. I have been highly anticipating reading this one and I'm really glad that it didn't disappoint. Um, this one, especially if you love slasher movies, if you've seen a lot of them. This one has so many easter eggs. Several of our main characters are actually, their names are the actresses names in certain iconic works of horror in the slasher genre, which I thought was really cool. Um, Grady Hendrix always, you know, his books are very, very self-referential and um, just little things like that definitely make me as a horror fan smile seeing all of those little easter eggs. So that was really fun. I will say this is the only book of Grady Hendrix's, I think, um, that doesn't have any sort of supernatural elements in it at all, which um, I'm not going to lie. I really enjoy the way he incorporates supernatural elements into his books. So um, like I think Horror Store had ghosts. My Best Friend's Exorcism had demonic possession. Um, we Sold Our Souls. Also some like demonic sort of things going on. And then The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires had vampires. This one um, really focused on slasher films and like an ode to slasher films. So there were no paranormal elements in this, which I was kind of missing a little bit. Um, but I did really enjoy this one um, and I just thought like any Grady Hendrix book it's laid out in such a fun way so between each chapter we get like kind of like a mixed media sort of thing going on where we get like reviews from movies that were made based on the characters in this book we get movie posters we get police incident reports like in between each one of these which i thought was really cool as well as every single chapter in this book is named the final girl support group number whatever and then it has like a title name so it's like a movie franchise almost which was really fun the first chapter is the final girl support group the second chapter is the final girl support group 2 the third chapter is the final girl support group 3d there's one called dream warriors there's one called i think spawn of final girl um it's so it's very self referential to different movies in the slasher genre. So I did really, really enjoy that. Also, I think this is one of the best examples of an unreliable protagonist narrator um, that I've seen in a while because a lot of times with that trope, I enjoy it when it's done well. However, a lot of times I feel like it's just used in a very uncomfortable way to um, kind of discredit people with mental health issues and like different mental illnesses. So um, this definitely did that in such a refreshing way, I thought. Our main protagonist, Lynette, is very different and she's definitely an unreliable narrator and you can tell there are certain biases with the way she discovers things and the way she's telling the story, um, but it was done really, really well. This did what I wanted um, Final Girls by Riley Sager to do. Um, this is definitely feels more like a slasher movie in its own right 
than um, just like a thriller kind of involving the aspect. So um, both were really good novels. I enjoyed both. I just enjoyed this one a whole lot more. It's less of a thriller and more of it does kind of have a slasher movie feel to it. I would absolutely love to see this on the big screen. But if I haven't given a synopsis yet, um, this is following a group of women who have all had like their own final girl scenario. So they're like the last survivors of a murderer who killed a lot of people. So they all have different scenarios. One is the survivor of like a summer camp massacre. One is the survivor of cannibals in the middle of the wilderness. One is a survivor of a prom night massacre. So um, you can kind of see where those specific movie franchises are coming in and influencing this. It has been quite a few years since all of these women, you know, th these things happened to them when they were teenagers and now they're all in their 30s, 40s, but are finding it understandably very, very hard, some of them harder than others to move past this horrific event that has happened to them and that has in a lot of ways shaped each one of them as a person and kind of defined their lives. So they all have a support group to deal with that because who better to understand the completely bizarre scenario and like not just bizarre but like horrific scenario that no one should have to like be in but they all have a very specific type of trauma so they all form a final girl support group and at the beginning of this book one of them turns up dead in very, very similar circumstances to her original event that she survived when she was a teenager. And our main character suspects that someone is coming after them one by one, replicating the ways that they were attacked and the people who attacked them such a long time ago. And she kind of vows to be a final girl again and try and stop this person before he kills all of her friends and the people in her support group. This was just a lot of fun. <laughs> if you're a horror fan, I would highly recommend. And I will say I'm not even like slasher movies are not my favorite type of horror movie, not by a long shot. Um, but this was just so much fun. Um, and there are scenes, um, there are a couple of scenes that really, really spooked me, which is hard to do, harder to do, I think, in a horror book than a horror movie, just because you don't have like the music scores to help with that sort of visual component. Um, so there were definitely several scenes that spooked me. I felt like this did feel like a very good slasher. I will say, I feel like the characters um, either are, I mean, our main characters are very unlikable, but they have reasons for being unlikable. So you can get past that. Um, it just wasn't as character driven, more plot driven than some of his other books, I feel like, but I also feel like that kind of fits in along the lines of a slasher because because in a slasher, a lot of character development, um, you don't need all of that if you're going to kill off these characters one by one very quickly as the movie starts. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed it. It is not my favorite Grady Hendrix novel and I'm gonna have to sit on it a little bit more to figure out what place it takes for me. My favorite is still My Best Friend's Exorcism. Um, I don't think anything will ever top that because I just loved it so much, but this was definitely on the higher end of books of his for me. I just I really enjoyed it. It really worked for me and I had a whole lot of fun reading this. I felt like it was the perfect blend of what you kind of want for almost in like a B-list slasher. Like it could be genuinely scary at times and also just a fun time. So now moving on to the final book in this vlog, the last book that I will be completing for my kind of three horror book vlog that I've got going on. That is going to be Billy Summers by Stephen King. And I'm a little intimidated by this one. I've been seeing very, very mixed reviews on this one. Um, so looking forward to it. So far in this vlog, I've read a book that I was hyping up so much in my head and it lived up to a hype and then a book that was getting a lot of hype on booktube and that sometimes when I read those, I kind of get disappointed, but um, I enjoyed it and I'm definitely not like as much into YA, especially YA thrillers anymore, um, but I enjoyed that one as well. So I've enjoyed both books so far. So I'm a little nervous to go into this one. Stephen King is one of my favorite authors, um, but again, I've heard very, 
very mixed things from people, even people who do really love Stephen King. So um, this is going to be my next book for this vlog and we will see how that goes. Okay, so I am coming on for the quickest of quick updates on Billy Summers. Um, it's okay. And it's not really pulling me in, which I was a little nervous about because the premise did sound really good. And some of my like favorite Stephen King books have been some of his more recent things. Um, however, <laughs> I don't think this is gonna be it and um, I'm not giving up on it yet. I'm only on page 120 out of 400 something. Um, I'm just kind of at a part where I'm waiting for it to pick up, especially since this is kind of billed as a thriller. It is not very thrilling. Um, it definitely is very, very slow um, to kind of pick up. And the synopsis that's like on, well, some of the synopsis that is on the dust jacket of this book has happened, but there's a whole second half of what is happening on the dust jacket that has not happened yet. Um, about like a fourth of the way through this book. So I'm waiting for that to happen and then we'll see how I feel about it. I will say it's not bad. Um, it's like not like I'm actively not enjoying it. It's just kind of there. Um, it's technically very good writing. Um, Stephen King, I do like his writing style. The story's just not really gripping me and I don't really have a sense of our main character yet and since there hasn't been a whole lot of plot i would expect to maybe get more of a sense for who billy summers is as our main character but i haven't yet which is important to me um this has just kind of been a very um miss year for me in terms of stephen king i think i've read about six books of his so far this year and one of them was very very good dolores claiborne i absolutely loved um, I'm trying to think, I don't think any of the other ones that I've read have been like very particularly very memorable or I've just downright not liked them. So that's a bummer, um, but I am kind of at the point in my Stephen King reading journey where um, I'm almost-ish caught up on his back catalog and I've been putting off a lot of the ones that I think I'm going to like the most, um, kind of saving the best for last. So I should probably start trying to space them out more. But um, yeah, I can't really give like a synopsis of this book other than what I've already given you in this vlog. It's about a hitman named Billy Summers who agrees to do one last hit before he retires and we're following that one last hit. And that's all I can tell you because um, 
<laughs> nothing has really happened. And again, I'm a very character driven reader. Um, I would say a lot of my favorite books, if I were to go to Goodreads or Storygraph and look at one star reviews of my favorite books, a lot of the things that I would see in one star reviews are things that like make it a five star book for me, if that makes any sense. Um, so I don't mind slower books, but this one I'm just really not connecting with the main character yet, nor does he feel like he's a hitman. So yeah, I'll update with more thoughts on this later if I have any more thoughts, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. All right, so I am coming on to wrap this vlog up. Um, I've already filmed this clip and it like didn't actually record properly. So this is the second time I'm doing that. So um, yeah, let's see if I can get down all the information that I did the first time, but I'm done with the vlog. I am done with Billy Summers for right now. Um, and we're just gonna wrap this vlog up. I intentionally did this vlog of reading three thriller horror sort of books because I love horror and fall is coming up. So I wanted to get into spooky season, dive in head first with some seasonal reads. And um, I, it definitely went a lot different than I was expecting because um, I love horror and this was just more of a roller coaster than I thought. I was expecting to really, really love all three of these books and unfortunately, I just did not. So in retrospect, I will say the one that I did not like is the least horror. I think it's the one that's most like a thriller. So I guess keep that in mind, but it is by someone who has written a lot of horror before and that would be Billy Summers by Stephen King. Um, the last update that I had in this vlog had me feeling very ambivalent towards it. Um, and I got a hundred pages more through this one than when I updated and um, I've decided to DNF it. I DNFing it, this is not the book for me. I am very sad about this one because this was one of the only books that I've bought in brand new this year. It was one of my most anticipated releases and to not only really not like it, but to not even be able to finish this one. This is the first time that I've had that happen for a Stephen King book, although I've gotten very, very close with Mr. Mercedes and The Stand, um, but I just, I can't, I can't do this one. I will say if you want to dive into this one, big, big trigger warnings for rape, sexual violence, and just like, just a lot of um, gratuitous violence throughout. This is about a hitman who is doing one last job. At least that is kind of what you're expecting when you go into this one. So, you know, he's a contract killer. There's going to be violence in this one. I was enjoying it. I did think it was a little bit slow, a little bit boring, but technically very good writing um, until the plot really switches around and transforms from a hitman doing one last job to rape revenge sort of plot line, which I just, I don't know if Stephen King is the right author to tackle that because I think it is something, I mean, I think everything that we experience as people should be tackled in fiction and, you know, kind of gone through in fiction. And I have read books that to deal with such dark topics and I've really enjoyed them. Um, however, this one was just really, really bad. Um, just the way, you know, I think King has a problem writing women at times. I definitely think if you look at Carrie and then you look at one of his more recent books, not this one, but one of his more recent books, I think he has gotten a lot better at writing women for the most part. Um, this just was a hot mess for me. Diving a little bit more into where exactly I DNF'd this one, our main character, Billy, um, finds this woman named Alice who has just been brutally raped and he, it's like happening on his street. She gets dumped on his street. Um, so again, like spoilers for just like this particular scene. Um, and he goes to 
save her um, and rescue her because this is a horrific thing that's happened to her. And the whole entire scene, how she's described what the character does, the character's internal dialogue, just disgusting. It was disgusting and it made me so unsettled in a way, like not a horror unsettled, um, like a book like maybe The Shining could have done, but just unsettled and just uncomfortable as a woman and just, I hated it. So ZNFing this one. Um, I might return to it someday um, just because I will still probably hold on to this one. And um, you know, if one day I'm like, you know what, I know I'm not gonna love it, but I just wanna finish it and see what happens. I might pick this one back up, but um, at this point, probably not. Um, this is probably, this is not probably, this is going to be in my most disappointing books of the year so far, unfortunately. So this book was in last place for this vlog, which, um, very sad. It's always hard when one of your favorite authors does you dirty like that. And then coming in second place, we have Ace of Spades, and I did really enjoy this one. This is a YA thriller. I have heard it be described as like a dark academia thriller. I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, but I do think it really verges on like a horror and a thriller. This is heavily comped with Get Out and Pretty Little Liars and Gossip Girl. And I would say that's very accurate. I really, really enjoyed this one overall. I thought this was a very good YA novel. I would highly recommend the audiobook. I think some of the shocking things and discussions that are happening, I think especially as like a non-Black reader, um, intentionally being shocked by listening to the audiobook and just some of the language and the dialogue is intentional. So I would recommend you listening to it via an audiobook. That being said, this book is also full of triggers. Um, it does deal a lot with um, I'm gonna try and do an all-encompassing list here. So trigger warnings for death of a parent, overdose, drug addiction, um, suicidal ideation, um, suicide attempts that um, do not like go to completion, extreme racism, slurs for both queer people and black people, some pretty triggering homophobia. And then of course we have the big one, which this one is, uh, spoiler almost like a plot twist to it but it's also a huge trigger so again um skip past when i don't have the trigger warnings thing right here um if you don't want to hear it but social eugenics is used that description like that very term is used in this one and talked about and trying to be completed throughout this novel so very very triggering so just know going into this one especially i hear a lot about this one about how it's really wonderful but I just never hear about like some of these triggers and I feel like that would be a book that you need them for. I would say this one um, was very much felt very heavily on like Pretty Little Liars and Gossip Girl at the beginning of this book and then by the end definitely had a get out twist. Um, I had some issue with how the main characters were separately finding out information and like not relaying them to the other main character even though they're supposed to work together like there are some revelations that they have that i felt like they should have shared with the other one because they were kind of working together on the same team um but i definitely think like those differences and how characters act to situations is because they are seniors in high school they're teenagers I'm an adult, so that makes sense. I'm not nitpicking that too, too much. Author's note at the end, again, in the audiobook, the author reads that herself, and it was um, very impactful. So I would recommend this one. Just know I don't get like, a lot of people are including it on like dark academia vibes type of books. I don't get those vibes. It's a very well done thriller and like a horror with social commentary, like Get Out. But it also can be a very heavy book. Um, in no way I would describe this book as fun. So. So just keep that in mind but I did really enjoy it and honestly I hadn't really planned on picking it up I somehow missed it when it was coming out I think it came out in May or June and I hadn't heard about it until I think July when other people on booktube were reading it and I got intrigued so I am really grateful that um, I heard about it eventually and got to pick it up because it was a very good book
And then last but not least, but certainly the one that I think I updated the least on because I was not expecting to fly through this one as much as I did, that would be the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I really loved this one. Grady Hendrix is one of my favorite authors, so two of the authors in this vlog were ones that I had read and really loved before, and I really loved this one too, so I'm really glad um, that Grady Hendrix did not let me down. I think this one felt a little 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 bit different than some of his earlier works just because this is the only one with um, no like paranormal aspects you're very much focusing on the category of horror that is the slasher genre and just the ones where it is like nothing supernatural is happening it's just a killer in a mask killing off teens one by one um, so we're following a group of women who have all been final girls in their own horrific scenarios. They were all teens when different um, sorts of tragedies happened to them straight out of a horror movie. And again, like all of Grady Hendrix's books, this is very, very meta. If you've watched a lot of horror movies, a lot of slasher movies, you'll pick up on so many Easter eggs in here, which I feel like it's just a very, very fun experience. You can always tell based on the genre or like the kind of tropes that are dealt with in the book. There's going to be a lot of easter eggs and kind of making fun of some of those tropes expanding on others i really enjoyed this this was just very very i would say so this one i did feel like it was slightly faster paced than other Grady Hendrix books. Um, still, I would say this is a horror, not a thriller. It very much feels like a slasher movie. I would love to see this on the big screen. I think it would make an absolutely fantastic movie. It very much gave me Cabin in the Woods vibes with that sort of like making fun of itself and making fun of other movies in the genre, but like from like a very like hokey place of love um, because you know, tropes are popular tropes for a reason. We all love them. Our main character, Lynette, is one of the best examples, I'd say, of an unreliable narrator. Um, she's not like the most pleasant main character, and I will say I think she's probably one of the most unlikable main characters that Grady Hendrix has ever had, but that just really worked for me because you could totally understand um, her horrific past influencing her as an adult. And I just really, really enjoyed reading this one. Um, trigger warnings for it does go into like slasher movie scenarios and talking about violence. There's a lot of death in here. There is a lot of talks about mental health and addiction and death of a partner, death of a parent, death of a sibling, younger child. So this is like a slasher book and it doesn't shy away from graphic depictions of violence. So just keep that in mind if you're wanting to pick this one up. Um, it is a very, very gory book, as most slasher movies tend to be, but I really enjoyed it. It's not my new favorite, but it's definitely like higher up there. Nothing can really top my best friend's exorcism for me. That's my favorite of Grady Hendrix's books, but I did really, really enjoy this one. And this was also one of my most anticipated releases. So I'm really glad that this one did not disappoint. I had a whole lot of fun reading this. So that is going to be it for this vlog. I had a lot of fun reading three horrors and thrillers. Very, very excited for the rest of September, moving into October, which is spooky season. I really enjoyed two out of these three books, so I definitely consider this vlog a success in that aspect. If you have an idea that you'd like to see me read three books on, whether it be a genre, a subject, like something tying all three books together, let me know down below. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content from me. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!